I am back and it feels great. Thank y'all for being so patient with me as we move houses, finish up some projects, got caught up with stuff, but I'm ready to get back in the saddle and get videos in your hands regularly. And to say thank you for your patience, I've got a brand new update for you. My audio toolkit for 2025 it is much simpler, has the right resources at your fingertips. You can get that at the link below. If you've already got it before, it's now at a different link and different platform. So just go to the same link uh, put in your email and you will get that sent right to you. So what I'd like to do is walk through each of those five key resources that are in there. But first, I want to hear from you in the comments below. What do you want from me as far as training goes and new content for this year? So that means maybe a monthly live stream where I'm walking through the real designs that I'm working on. What kind of courses do you want? Do you want it to be a longer format that's more principles or maybe a smaller, more affordable, and subject-based, maybe a killer course on subwoofers or one that's just for DJs or maybe just tuning your youth room. I, I really want to focus on sound system design and tuning and then also adjacent things within my corporate audio career and other things with music. Uh, but I just need feedback from you. What is that? I know it's been a while since I've been doing stuff regularly. So I want to put the right stuff in front of you. So let me know in the comments below. Okay, now, so let's jump into our walkthrough of the audio toolkit for 2025. What's new, what's different, and what is simpler. Here we go. All right, so it's hosted on this tool called Whimsical. It's basically like a web page, so nothing super fancy, but uh, I've had folks that are having trouble getting to the Notion link, so this is this is a simpler way to do it. So here we are. Here are these six resources. The first, I'll just make you aware, is my system tuning workshop. This is the best place to start. If you are new, this is a paid workshop. You can go at any one of these links, but the basic framework is to have you be able to plan your setup, verify it, process, and listen and make adjustments. Um, and I'll let you check this out if it's interesting to you. But now I'm going to move on to the free stuff that could be available to you today. All right. So if you're new to my channel, you, you probably haven't seen my audio mass survival spreadsheet. This right here, again, is a, a Google sheet that has a ton of stuff in it that is uh, really helpful if you're trying to calculate and figure out your sound system. So here's the link. It's in both Imperial and in Metric if you are across the pond. So it really gets you comfortable with these key and underlying concepts of how frequency, period, and wavelength are related because you need to be able to understand sound to be able to manipulate it and measure it. Measure it. So if you're struggling with a tool like Smart to be able to read the data, it might be because you just don't have a, a really good grasp of these fundamentals. And that's why I made this spreadsheet. As I was as I was trying to get a hold of what was happening, really solidify it in my brain, being able to see how all of this worked together. So being able to understand the, the decibel scale, uh, figure out if you need delays, understand how comb filters work, be able to know a, a known audience depth and width, and figure out what speakers can be perfectly suited to cover that is all right here. What I use most often often on the day-to-day -day basis is this front fill uncoupled array spacing. So being able to see like, hey, here's the speakers that I have. There's the coverage angle. Uh, how far is it to the first row? Here's how many I have. And then what is the actual width or listening plane length or the how many, how wide am I able to cover? So that one is really useful. So anyway, please dive into this. Uh, it's, it's a great tool for you in my audio toolkit. So that's first up. And oh, I'll mention right here that uh, you can go to file, <laughs> make a copy, and then it's yours. So don't send me a request to edit it because that's going to do the original. So this is how you can have it for your own. And if you're on my email list, which you will be, if you can opt into it, if you get this resource, uh, you I will send any updates out with a new length one, once I make updates to it. Next is moving on to system tuning target curves. It is available here in a Google Drive folder. They'll take you right here. It has both of them for smart and for open sound meters. So let me show you how that works. These are the four curves that I developed. They all follow the basic uh, shape above 500. And excuse me, I did not develop them. I've kind of tweaked them from other system engineers that I've borrowed and kind of made them my own. So this is not my original. But I would say the one that slopes up to 15 dB here at 63 hertz is your big festival concert, big massive system, slopes down here, and all of them meet here about 500. And they have a very gentle slope down here at about 16K, and then they roll off. So I, I found again and again, once I land everything to be even throughout the system above 500 and above, rarely am I touching things. It's really just the amount of low end and low mid slope is what I'm adjusting. So within that folder, you're going to have one that's called plus six, plus nine, plus 12, and plus 
15, and you can import them. So here is a little GIF or GIF. I think the jury is still out. I was gonna show you how to do that. So here's the end of it, but you will download these. You're gonna make sure you're in real time mode. You go to options and then target curves. You're gonna to go to import, and then you will see those six. So again, plus six, plus nine, plus 12, plus 15. You're gonna open them. So this is different than the .trf file. Uh, this is actually a new target curve function in V9. So here I just checked only the plus 15 one, and then I went to show target curves, and here we are. So that is how you import it into Smart. And then now moving on to open sound meter, uh, that's the end of it. It's going to loop. Okay, so start from magnitude view. So if you're in spectrum, go to magnitude, and then you're going to go up to file, go to import. So this is importing a trace like you used to before this new feature is added in smart. Uh, right here is the plus 15 one, and there it is. So now you can use it and then even manipulate this target trace feature to make it match if you want to do it. So all that being said, all these are really similar up to 500. It's just the amount of low end tilt. So if I'm tuning a system and the room is feeling weird or just subs aren't feeling right, I'll adjust it down and make it fit one of these four slopes. Okay, so that's our second resource. Now moving on to the reference track Spotify playlist. So this is a uh, reference playlist that I keep up to date and go here to the playlist link. You can open here in a web browser. And these are the tracks that I know really, really well to be able to listen to and tune a system. So this is like my own built-in transfer function. Of, I know what they sound like here in my studio, what they sound like here on headphones. I've heard them on hundreds of PA systems and I know what is gonna translate. And I'll, I'll walk you through why I like these first three tracks. So Phoenix by Andrew Holmes, who I actually had the pleasure of mastering. He's a phenomenal artist. It was a great mix engineer, Bradley uh, Prakaby. I, I like using this one because it has a huge kick and snare that are very far apart. So the kick fundamental sits about 45, 50 hertz and the snare fundamental sits about 140. So I get to see how the impact of the subs right in the meat of their range hits with the kick. But then I want equal impact on the snare, even though on the target curve, you know, it is going to slope down some between that, but psychoacoustically, I want it to feel like it's kick, snare hitting me equally. The kick is going to hit me in the chest, the snare in the face is how I imagine that. But I I really like that track for that. It's a nice clear vocal. Again, it has a slow pace to it. So it gives me a long time to hear how long the, the transients are taking to fade out in the room, which is really helpful. So I like that track for those reasons and it's just an enjoyable song. And I like Thanks to You by Boz Skaggs because it has a really deep low end and bass that hangs out on notes for a long time. So I can walk farther distances and hear how the low end is translating while it hangs out on one note, which is really cool. Because I would say the one one of the weak points with the Phoenix track is it's in the key of A and it hangs out on the fundamental and then it goes down to the flat seven and fundamental flat seven a whole lot. So it's, it's not a whole lot of different harmonic ranges it's moving around, but thanks to you in the verses hangs out with the, with the bass on a few notes uh, for long periods of time, then towards the pre-chorus and chorus, it moves more. It also is the epitome of full range. It's a very deep bass, but it has this constant ticky tacky sounding little, almost little finger symbol type sound uh, that is rhythmic and driving. So it's really easy to hear flamming with with very high frequencies in which our ears are sensitive to as it's doing that. Um, and then lastly, Corduroy, again, if you don't know this artist, it's Joey Landreth who fronts the Brothers Landreth, just a great artist. Uh, again, a slower paced song that gives me time to hear what's happening with the PA system. It's just a, a great vocal take. It's, it's just a great mix um, that I just really enjoy listening to. It's a very tapey, low end kick. It's a very deep kick. So you really get to hear if the sub has an extension way down low. It hits really nicely. And I, uh, I love the guitar tone on it and how it sits as well. It has a lot of really nuance playing in the verses. That's a clean tone. And then it rips with the solo later. So it's a nice dynamic range for me to hear something that's a little bit more docile. And then it rips and gets big later. And I can see how that evolves. Uh, Temptation is actually one of Jamie Anderson's, the founder of Rational Acoustics' favorite track. So I stole that from him. Anyway, check these out. They're great. So you're going to have that for free in the toolkit. And so we got the reference tracks. Now moving on to the sound system tuning gear buyer's guide. So if you're looking to get started, you think like, okay, do I need um, the $800 Earthworks microphone or can I get away with the $99 Behringer or it's even cheaper now? Uh, what interface do I need? So I filmed this in 2023, but this is the gear that I still use in my Pelican. And I would still advise anyone to do the same if they're looking to get a measurement setup of their own. So where that's getting the, the Evo interface series, which I still use and are great, smart, 
LE as a great starting point if you're looking to get an analyzer, uh, this uh, the RTA microphone from Rational Acoustics, or you get the ISIMCon. Anyway, I cover that here, but I just want to make sure you really know about it if you've come uh, along some of my other videos first, that this is going to be, if you were, if we were to get coffee or beer or something and sit down and be like, hey, I really want to get into this. What gear do I need? Here's the most affordable and long-term thinking way to invest in your setup. So definitely check that out. And then lastly, if you are having trouble translating what you're hearing um, and these adjectives that we use to describe sound into actionable moves, either on your PA systems or your mix, I developed this ebook called the Nine EQ Pivot Points. So here, again, free little ebook. I wrote this a few years ago, but still great. It's helped a lot of people. Um, and it, it basically breaks down that all you got to know is three numbers, five, one, and two. So 50, 100, 200, 500, 1K, 2K. So all we did was add a zero. And then 5K, 10K, 20K. And so five, one, two. And if you just spent the next nine months only boosting or cutting those frequencies, either in PA systems or in your mixes, you're going to start to really internalize those. So I did say nine months, I spent 90 days, do that. So three months. And so what this does is it walks you through, okay, pivot point number one, 50 hertz. That's depth and weight. So that is how I describe 50 hertz, how that hits me in the chest. So that first song, Phoenix, I talked about, that kick has a lot of depth and weight to it. So if I want more out of it, out of the PA system, after I get it to my target curve, I'm, hmm, I'm like, I, I want more of that. Even though the data is telling me we are here psychoacoustically and experientially, viscerally, how am I experiencing that? I would boost at 50 hertz and see how that goes. And then moving up to 100 hertz, that's warmth and punch. 200 hertz is thickness and mud, so so on and so forth. And then the very last page is all of them here in one easy printable thing that has uh, all of these. So I've had uh, church tech teams just print this out and have it in their booth, uh, which is great. Or maybe a production company, you could have it with your consoles for new folks. But it's just a great set of adjectives that give you a common language to talk about sound and help you anchor what is going on. All right, so back to the toolkit. That is the last resource that's in there. If there's something else in the old toolkit that you still wanted, uh, it's still there. That link is still live, but it's going to be going away here in the next few weeks of, of, as folks get to this link. Um, but if it is gone and you really still need access to it, just shoot me an email or leave me a comment or something like that. I'll get it to you. But I just wanted to give you something that was not as overwhelming of all these things I developed, but definitely check all of these out. And again, please do not forget to let me know what training, what videos, uh, what's keeping you up at night, what can I really help you with this year when it comes to both free content like this, but as well as some paid either live streams, in-person workshops, uh, courses they can go through, what would be helpful. All right. I'm Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you next time.